All right, this video is in regards to a 2004 Dodge Ram 1500 four-wheel drive with the 5.7. Uh, sorry, sorry about the background noise. It's actually Christmas Eve, so. What I'm doing here is, there's a vehicle I believe has a, well, we know it has a bad connection. This orange connector, so I got one of all the connectors from the salvage yard. And it may possibly have a bad PCM with the pins in there, pin retention or in the board itself. So I picked all these four connectors up and this uh, ECM at a salvage yard for like 47 bucks. So long story short is, I looked at the schematics, I got my power and grounds, my SCI transmit and receive for PCM, SCI transmit and receive for TCM, and my PCI. All going to my breakout box, hooked up to my scan tool right there. How do I hook all this up? Basically, I'm using the Mopar service library. I'm going through all of these wiring diagrams and connectors one at a time to set up all the power and grounds, the SEI transmit and receive. Um, it took me a while to set this up, but it's showing you here in the bus communications for all your DLC connections and all that. So I got power grounds, DLC connections, everything. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to connect to click on an Ulta Dodge. And I'm going to go in here and identify because I have no idea what VIN this is on this vehicle or not. But the whole point of this is I want to write the VIN to the CCM from the truck I'm going to put it in and put the newest software on there. So I'm going to go to manual selection. And again, to set the power and grounds up in SEI and the PCI and all that stuff, it took some time for sure. I'm using an AS Wave kit, um, one of the Autels there. So there's the Dodge program we're using. And I know it's in 04 because when I pulled it off the vehicle, and our battery voltage is 12.11 volts, which is what we got from the wall. So we're going to go back to 04, it's a RAM, boom, it pulled the VIN right there from the PCM. That's the VIN from the one in the junkyard, the salvage yard. Diagnosis, we're going to go to the powertrain. The PCM, or the ECM, TCM is the same thing because it has four connectors because the fourth connector, the green one, is for the transmission. And then we're going to pull this data up. Of course, we can read codes, but there's going to be several codes because, well, there's no feedback from any sensors. But we know we got calm. That's a good thing. So if I go into read codes here, yeah, a bunch of codes, right? But if I go into ECU information, I can go in here. There's the software for a part number. And... It says it's a 4.7, it's actually a 5.7. I know the Autel kind of identified this wrong. I used a Mako one earlier. Or it's basically a Mako, it's a rebranded launch. I believe it is. OTC or launch, think launch. It says a 5.7, we know it's a 5.7. But I'm gonna go up here, go to my J253 Red Fed World Report. I'm gonna control F. I'm gonna type this software number in up here, so 560-291-291-6161 Alpha Delta. I'm going to hit enter, there's Evan, and let it search. There, that's the software. So it's a 2004. 5, 7, 50 states, 1,526 count without all the drive T case. So there is a PCM software update, which is up there. Produce TSBs. Now, I already downloaded that software update right here, which is the new file right there. I downloaded this, and we're going to use YTech 2.0, the legacy app, to flash it. But first, we want to change the VIN. Um... So yeah, what we're gonna do first then, is go back. We're gonna write the VIN. So let me get the VIN down 
of the truck that we're gonna put it in, because this is the VIN for this truck, but we wanna put the VIN in from the truck we're working on. So let me write that down next. Well, I actually have the VIN right here from when I'm using my service library. So I'm gonna go into special function. I'm gonna go to check VIN. After we're done with this, we need to write the odometer, learn an electron throw control, do all that once it's in the truck. So check VIN. So the VIN is valid. This is what it is. It ends in 768, but it doesn't match ours. That ends in 3517. Hit OK to change it. So I'm going to type it in. One delta. Seven H U seven H U eighteen D four four eighteen D four four S six one three S six one three five one seven hit OK verify is it right one D seven H U one D seven H U eighteen D four four 18D44, S613, S613517. It's got to be right, otherwise we'll have a VIN mismatch with other modules. VIN rate successful. So now we knew the miles would put that in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to re-identify the vehicle. Now I'm just using the MS906BT. Now if this had a skim module, which this one doesn't, but if it did, we'd have to go to PCM replaced and type in, the, get a four digit pin. To do that, we'd use this guy right here, the IM508 to pull the pin, or one of these other scan tools, a mobilizer scan tools to pull the pin. I don't believe this one has that security system, but if it did, we'd have to have that four digit pin. So we're going to re-identify it here and make sure it pulls up that VIN that ends in 3517. We know it's in 04. Yeah, we could do auto selection. Actually, let me exit all of all of this because it already pulled that other VIN. Let me do this real quick. All right, I guess it, it did pull the right VIN, 3517. But just to prove it here, sorry, we're going to go to auto detect this will be the real test. So we'll auto detect it. It's gonna pull the VIN off of this, which should match that since we rolled it into the ECM here. Again, it, again remember, the ECM and the TCM is all one in this case, because it's got four connectors. If it was three connectors, it'd be just an engine computer. Since it's got four, the fourth connector, C4, the green one is always the transmission part of the partition. So we got COM, pull it up. And then there it is, 3517. S613. That's the one. That's it. So it pulled it and it saved it into the computer because we wrote it. And now what we can look at here, once it pulls up, let me pause it for a sec. All right, pick the year again. It's Chrysler for you. RAM, diagnosis, control unit, powertrain, ECM. Come on. So ECU information should show the old and the new VIN now. Well, this one doesn't show the VIN, sorry. Um, newer vehicles, Chrysler's, will show the old VIN and the new VIN. Um, this one may actually enter global. Take a look under global. But remember that it ends in Alpha Delta. We're going to change it to AI, I believe. So let me get out of this. Let me identify it as global and take a look. I think it'll show the VIN in here in the mode 9. We know it changed because... It matched that right there but I just want to prove on newer Chrysler's because this is an older version this is the DRB3 days of this this is, an, this is not a Y-Tech vehicle 
but um, that's what we're gonna use the legacy app to flash it. But it'll show you the old VIN compared to the new VIN. That's so you know how somebody put a module in and rewrote it for the VIN. So it identified under global. Let's just see if it shows anything. Oh, and the way I'm doing it with my key on engine off, got main power to the box, constant power, my ignition switch. Yeah, nothing under global. Which is fine. Anyways, we know the VIN's right. We wrote it in there. It says it right there. Like I said on some of the other newer modules, it'll actually show you um, the old and the new VIN. But when we identified it, we already proved that when we went into it and looked at it. Which I'll show you again here just to remember. Make sure I'm not missing nothing here. So exit out of global. And then we go to history. Again, it ends in 3517, 3517, 3517. But look right here, 768, because that's the one we originally wrote from this to that. So now what I want to do now, the VIN's written for that vehicle. There's no uh, security on this vehicle. So I'm going to do now is set up my J-Box and program the new software on there. We can use the Ultra J-Box or we can use a Kardak 3, which will probably use the Kardak 3 and rate that next. Oh, and by the way, I'm back under the Dodge program. If there was a four digit code or had a skim module, there would be another tab in here that says PCM replaced. And then you would have to pull that with the IM508 series or one of the other mobilizer scan tools. So this one doesn't have it. I knew that by looking at the key, it was just a regular silver key, but not a security key. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and program it now. That ends in Alpha Delta to Alpha Igloo, I guess. Um, I gotta use the Kardak 3 hooked up. So I'm gonna open my YTAC 2.0. When I'm using Legacy, you got to put your files in a certain spot, download them a certain way, have your Java, blah, blah, all this stuff. You want to learn how to do that, go over to L1 Training. Pay this subscription fee over there. It's well worth it. You can learn how to do all this stuff. So I'm going to go to Switch Chrysler Application. Select my pass-through. Drew Technologies. Hit Start. Turn the key past off position to the lock position. Well, that's going to be kind of hard to simulate because we don't have a key. We'll try. All right, so we're going to try to do this. I'm going to turn power off. That's my ignition switch, and I'll turn this one off. We'll try this here. Turn the key to the run position. Okay. Current part number is Alpha Delta. Do you want to go to Alpha I? Yes. If this vehicle is a 2006 JR, turn the ignition key off. Disconnect the BCM module and turn. It's not. That's for the C rings and stuff. Turn the key past the off position to the lock position. Okay. Turn the key to the run. Can't screw up these sequences. Okay. It says it's reprogramming. Let's see if this actually works. Hopefully, it doesn't brick it. I'll pause it here for a second. It says there's an error. I think it's because of the way I sequence those buttons there. We'll try something here different. This is like my third attempt. I think it's going to fail again because it says CAN bus disable and active. This isn't even half CAN bus, so I don't know why it's showing that. But it tells us to turn the key to the opposition, which I'm using these because I have these 1230 and 1215 signals, voltage, ignition, trying to... Uh, Simulate that, but it can't go past the opposition. I might have to do some more looking at this bench program setup what I got going on If not, I'll just throw it in the vehicle and program it in the vehicle and then we'll be good to go 
Yeah, so it says an error occurred sending a block erase request, which is a good thing because it hasn't erased that block yet. So we didn't break nothing, it sounds like. I'll hook up the scan tool, make sure, and then we can um, hook up. So we'll just put it in the truck and we'll program it there. But at least we got the VIN written, so we got regular files on there, so we can still run it like this. And then we'll pro program it and go from there. All right, so like I said, we're gonna have to program it on the vehicle. I must have something configured wrong, or maybe it's an ASD relay circuit. I didn't hook that one up yet. But anyways, I had I didn't have com for a while, and I'm like, uh oh, I didn't have com with Global, didn't have com with Cardac, didn't have com with uh, the Dodge program. And up, I recycled power and I turned it back on, and now I got com again. And nothing was erased. It didn't erase the logical block, so that's good. So we're back to where we were. Still got the file in there. We'll check the VIN. And it should be valid still. Should be what, 3517? Yep, it's valid, so we're good. So we got the VIN written into, into it, that's good. There's no security, so technically you could plug this vehicle in and it would run fine. Now, we do wanna put the newest software updates on there. We'll just do that in the vehicle when everything's hooked up. But we can use this, plug it in and We'll be good so that'll probably be a different part of this video this will be part one um i don't know if it'll be two parts or one part but uh we got the vin written they can put this in you can check it test it write the new software we don't even have to write the new software for the issues that were happening with this vehicle because basically what's happened i mean i didn't even say in the beginning of the vehicle but it's got a electronic throttle control issue and every time you move this connector the orange one would act up you move it a different way go get better act up so we're like is it pin retention? Is it in the board? Is it the harness? We just got everything for 47 bucks. Probably end up gonna splice this new connector in. But I do wanna test this first before we splice that in just to make sure. And then we can always program it and they can splice a new connector in and we'll be good. So more to come. All right, so this, what I found out with this thing is I missed a power, a key power on this one for an auto transmission one. And I didn't need these grounds for the TCM part of separate grounds that I believe. So I got some, I got everything set up the same way except I got rid of these grounds, which wouldn't matter anyways. But I got my SEI bus transmit and receive for TCM and transmit and receive SEI bus for PCM. And then I got my, also my uh, PCI bus. So PCI bus is for scan tool communication it looks like, which I have. And then SCI transmit and receive for PCM TCM is for programming. And I missed one of the power sources. So we're gonna try it again. I'm gonna turn this AD into an AI. So I'll set that up next. All right, so I also verified with the FL part file. Since it's a salvage one, I got that updated. It's actually been updated already, but if you ever had to do that, um, you wanna go to l1training.com. It's well worth it. You pay this fee there to learn all this stuff. So we're going to go to YTAC 2.0 using the Kardac 3 Plus. Let's see what happens here. So we're going go to go to the Legacy app. So I got my main part of the box battery power and ignition switch. Hopefully, our battery power is good enough. We're not using a power supply, but it's still consistent. This is Hardac. Hit start. Turn key past the off position to the lock position. Which I assume is the accessory, so I'll turn this one off. I don't know if I should turn them both off, because that's ignition power. Yeah, we'll try it there. Turn to the run. Do you want to update it from this one to this one, Alpha Delta, the AI? Yes. It's on a 2006 JR. Turn the key past the opposition to the locked. Same thing, can't bust inactive. I think it's going to fail. Turn to the run. Yeah, it's going to fail, I bet. Because this is where it... Well, it's actually doing something there. 
Сейчас. Well, what it's doing now. We'll see what happens. I'll pause it for a sec. All right, it's continuing the transfer bytes there. So we'll see. Never went this far before. You know, if I scroll up here and look, it says CAN bus disactive or CAN bus disable and active. This doesn't have CAN bus. I verified that. Because that would be pin 34 and 35 on this connector one. It's not a CAN vehicle. It's SCI. So hopefully everything works out with this. Hopefully I'm not missing nothing. Like I said, I got rid of those grounds. Reach out to some guys that do this bench programming. Obviously we can do this in the car, but I always want to see if I can do it on the bench. So I'll trans or I'll pause it until we get some more excitement, maybe. Well, it's continuing to go. And if you look, pin seven and twelve is flashing. Well, if you look on here. 7 and 12 goes to Y and Z. Y and Z goes to SEI transmit. SEI transmit. It's supposed to be SEI transmit and receive. They got this label wrong, but it's for the PCM. And that's what we're flashing right now. When it's done with that, I imagine it's going to do the TCM, which should be, we'll see here, the other pins. Well, I'll show you when it actually does it, but because that's supposed to say TCM would be 9 and 15 would flash, which would be that one and that one. Sorry, that one and that one. But we'll see here what it does. It says module type NGC3 SCI, and that's what we're doing. Continue to do this. Well, it's continuing the flash here. I've been doing it for like seven minutes so far. Let's hear Cardac Plus 3 is communicating there. We don't want to hook any wires. We don't want to lose power. We're running 12 and a half volts. Typically when you flash your car, you're, you know, what? Oh, it just went down to 11.8. That's not cool. That's still good. 12.5, 12.7. And I have a power supply I could hook up to this as well. To this thing and maintain better voltage with that as well, but... We'll try with the box here. We'll see what happens. So we'll continue to flash. Getting closer. 94 and a half thousand. Or 943,000 actually. Out of 983,000. So we'll continue to go here. I think next time I'll probably actually hook up a power supply to this. I mean this just should be fine. I just know it's fluctuating voltages. A little bit but you what you don't want ideally okay so it says turn key pass opposition to the lock that one hit okay turn to the run okay turn it to the same thing passed off okay turn it to the run Okay, now it's doing the transmission. Hopefully this works. I should read the other pins. Yep, 9 and 15 now. 9 and 15, that's SEI for the TCM. Now it's going to transfer these bytes. And again, 9 and 15 is PCM. It's this supposed to, or TCM. This is supposed to say it's TCM right there. SEI transmit and receive. But a better picture would be um so first one we did is the 57 SEI receive PCM and then SEI transmit PCM and then we're doing TCM because it's except 37 manual which it's not SEI 26 and transmission 37, 26, 37, 26, 37, which is 9 and 15 on the DLC, which is 9 and 15 on the DLC. And we're flashing the TCM now because, again, this is a partition computer in there. So we'll continue to do this and I'll pause it till we get some more excitement, I guess. All right, so we're almost approaching halfway there. <laughs> 
9 and 15. So we'll continue to do this. If I was doing this again, I probably would look into my power supply that I normally use on a car. Um, just to maintain voltage better, I could hook it up through this breakout box or right to the computer, make some leads. And, you know, I don't, probably don't have to, but I just feel better about it. I mean, we'll know when we're done if it says program successfully. And the other thing is, is my key cycle. It says turn off the ignition, which I have this as ignition wired up. And then I have this one wired up for constant. So I'm turning this off. You can't go past ignition, like to accessories. I don't know if that's what they mean or not, but just turn the ignition off. I could turn the main power off, but obviously if it wasn't working correctly, it would tell us on here. So I believe we did that correctly because that is my constant power to the PCM and that's my ignition switch resembled. So we'll continue to do the TCM right now, which just proves that to communicate, you know, we're on pin 38 on here, going to pin two on the breakout box. That's for scan to a communication. And then the SCI on these older ones is for uh, programming. Newer ones, CAN bus. This doesn't have CAN bus. Apparently some of these cars back in the day did. But if they did on this one, it would be pin 34, 35 right here but if you notice they're blank so it does not have CAN bus on this one which I don't think it came out to a few years later on these cars anyways so I'll continue to flash and this should go to AI when we're done this 5602916161 Alpha Delta should go to the 5602916161 Alpha India we'll verify that with the Altel 906 PT when we're done flashing alright coming up to the end here 503,000 out of 524,000. Sure, sure it'll have a psycho key ignition. Okay, if the vehicle is a 2006 JR, turn ignition key off, reconnect the BCM, it's not. Turn the key pass off position to the locked. We'll just still do that one. Turn it to the run. We'll do that one. Awesome. The current ECU part number is 5602961 Alpha India. Part number verification successful. Process complete. So it flashed perfectly. So now what we're going to do is hook up the 906B2 and verify that. We can still talk. Software's update, which it just showed us, but we're going to verify it and go from there. All right, 906 BT is hooked up. We're going to do an auto VIN again. So we'll let that connect here. Still auto detect in here. Chrysler takes a while on these autels for some reason. Well, that and Fords. I mean, I do have it saved in here, but I want to prove that it still auto detects. That way everything's good as far as communication. Now we're communicating should be through the PCI bus, which is pin 2. Once it goes through here, wasn't getting calm, so I had to turn power off, recycle power. Now I got pin two flashing, which is good. We didn't earlier, so let's try it again. Had to basically recycle the power, and now we actually got calm there. So simulating this, turning the key on, or turn it off, and then turn it back on. Awesome, we got calm. Something to note, recycle power. That's the VIN, 3517. Of course, there's gonna be a lot of codes because we're not hooked up to the network. But when we put in the vehicle, we can clear everything. Idea behind all this is since we already wrote the VIN and reflashed it to the new software, it's just literally plugged a computer in. The guys can replace the harness in if need be and go from there which they're going to have to because those other ones on the truck are bad. All right, 2004 Ram diagnosis control unit. Powertrain, engine control module. 12.15 volts. It's kind of messing around today since it's Christmas Day and there's really not too much going on. ECU information, 
Should have an AI at the end. Yes. 2004 560-29161 Alpha India. So it's been updated. Perfect. We know the VIN's good, 3517. We're going to have a bunch of codes because we don't have any outputs hooked up. Be a lot of active codes. Which will clear that when we go into the truck. Got live data. So, yeah, this, everything's good for this engine computer. So, what's going to happen now is they'll... Literally can put it in the truck, plug it in. They can splice those harnesses in. Um, and that'll fix this 2004 Ram 1500. Uh, first time I did a bench flash. Usually I flash all these in the vehicle, but I wanted to see if I could do it on the bench. Just make sure and have all these wire configurations hooked up correctly. Nothing shorted to ground. Like I don't want that touching the case. You know, all that stuff. There's over live data. So, it's a pose up there. But yeah. That'll be it for this video, doing a bench flash with the GoDiag breakout box, an 04 module, and a Kardak Plus 3.